trust in Jesus? And what about all the people in the world? Mr. Garrett has said the non-elect can't be saved. He doesn't have an opportunity to be saved, which is going to be most of the folks, apparently. And he's defending the God of grace and mercy. He says the, they were included into God's chosen people. They were in Christ, 164. The head and the class, the body of Christ, that is the church, the type of person, the, the obedient. And by the way, friends, when you talk about living by faith and the idea of being a believer, it's not just a one-time act. It is a, a way of life. So he, he predetermined that's the type of person that will be said. The obedient will become members of that chosen family. Those who make their calling and election sure. Well, how do, how do they do that if it's unconditional? And we heard a lot about conditions. I think it's a fair point to make that you have a passage that says make your calling and election sure. Now, what that does not mean is that you just kind of appear to do this. No, he says, make your calling and election sure. Is that a reality? Peter seems to think that it was a reality. You know, when we look at Ephesians 1, and this decision before the foundation of the world, 165, we see the wisdom. Did God plan it before the foundation of the world? Sure. But all individuals who hear have the gospel available to them. Again, they don't earn anything in that. They hear it and can render obedience to the gospel. Ephesians 3.11 says that this manifestation of the Lord's church was according to the eternal purpose of God. That's the NM in Ephesians 1. What was it? The chosen would be holy and without blame in Christ. The class, believers, would be adopted as sons. The plan is according to God's good pleasure. That's what brings God pleasure. And that's what he said. 166, who are they? They are the faithful in Christ. Look at chapter 1 and verse 4. Throughout this, he describes this class of persons, the kind of people. Again, you have to choose if you're going to be this kind of person. That's why the invitation of the gospel is made available to all. He says, according as he hath chosen us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before him in love. We find out that it would be those in Christ's body. That's where it is. You see that in Ephesians 1, 1 through 13, over and over and over and over him saying in him, by grace through faith, we're baptized into the chosen family of God, and we enjoy all spiritual blessings there. Now, we've already been told that being in that chosen status is a spiritual blessing, but all spiritual blessings are in Christ, and the only way to get in Christ is by an obedient faith. Now, think about that. If, if being chosen is a spiritual blessing, and in order to have all spiritual blessings, we have to be in Him. How does that work out for Mr. Garrett? 167. Elect or chosen again? Yes. Is it unconditionally? No. Is it individually? No. Does it violate free will? No. Are we predestined? Did God predestine that those who would be believers would be his children? Yes. Was it unconditional? No. Was it individual? No. Did it violate free will? No. 168. Now again, my question, number one, was pretty simple. Is being chosen of God a spiritual blessing? Mr. Garrett said yes. He said being chosen of God. I appreciate him answering that way. Is being chosen of God spiritual blessings? But again, all spiritual blessings, friend, are in Him. And we're not in Him before we exercise faith. Because that's the class of persons that He predestined would be those who are in Him. God did not choose individuals, but individuals are chosen when they are in the chosen Body, And that's why all of those descriptions in the New Testament of those in the body 
are that they are the chosen of God. And you look at this chart. Again, outside of Jesus, no spiritual blessings. We're not chosen outside of Jesus. It's our union with the chosen one. We're not children of God outside of that. We're not accepted outside of that. We're, we're not redeemed outside of that or forgiven or have a heavenly inheritance. It is inside Christ that we have saved. Again, remember that Ephesians 2 passage. They were without hope. They didn't just look like they were without hope. They were without hope. All spiritual blessings are in Jesus, though. And when they came into Jesus, they had all spiritual blessings and enjoyed those things. How do we get from that hopeless state to a state full of hope? By faith in Jesus Christ, by belief in Christ. And by the way, we have passages like Romans 6 and Galatians 3 and Acts 2. Now, my point here is not to get into an argument since we're talking about unconditional election, about baptism per se, but for you to see that there was a condition of coming into Christ. Galatians 3 says we are baptized into Christ, into Christ. And so if all spiritual blessings are in Christ and being chosen is a spiritual blessing, we're not chosen until we get in Jesus from that standpoint. And that was the eternal purpose and plan of God. It is in a predestined spirit. I believe what Ephesians 1 says. I just believe Mr. Garrett's interpretation because of the doctrine that he and the place he occupies doctrinally is wrong. Does the Bible talk about predestination and election and God making a choice before the foundation were? Sure it does. Do we enjoy as individuals being the chosen of God? Yes, but where? In the body. In the body. And not outside of the body. I hope you'll think about this very seriously. Thank you for your good attention.